welcome to the May q and I've had tons of questions for this edition, so I'm going to jump right in with a question about crowdfunding. Now, this has come up a lot in all of the work I've been doing with Racing Mentor over the years, and people always ask me if crowdfunding is a viable method to get racing. And I, I'm quite torn on this. So I've seen it succeed and it's worked for some drivers, but it doesn't go hand in hand with sponsorship. So if you've managed to build a large audience of fans who really love what you're doing, then it's likely that you'll be able to get a bit of cash uh, through crowdfunding, you know, if something goes wrong, if you need a new part, or just to get you to a special event or the first race of the season, whatever it might be. If you've built that kind of audience with a group of people who are willing to do that for you, then it's likely that you'd be able to work with a sponsor um, because you have such influence over that audience. Now this comes back down to the influential driver model that I, that I talk about a lot and becoming an influencer. If you put out a crowdfunding program and ask for money, it can seem like begging. Now, if your brand as a racing driver is about integrity, about racing really well, whatever it might be, being seen as begging for money on social media can come across as, as quite weird and quite desperate and that's not necessarily something that you want in your brand so bear that in mind if you're looking for high level sponsorship any sponsors that you speak to might not like the idea that you're just begging for money on social media because they might think that you're just going to ask them for money and then run off with it and not do anything because you don't understand how sponsorship works so be careful if you are crowdfunding i will i will go into this in more detail in another video for the app and the YouTube channel. The second question I had was about the brand new early access Get Paid to Race course, which is now running online with a select group of drivers who registered for it. Now, it might not be open to everyone just yet, but the question kind of relates to pricing and it's relevant to this early access course, which you might have access to or you might have access to at another time but also to the, the full course, even though that's not actually released yet at the time of this video going live. So the question was about pricing and if the 99 pounds plus VAT or your local tax fee is recurring or if it's a one-off payment. Now that's the early access price. When the full course goes live, it'll be 199 pounds. So anyone in this early access group is getting quite the bargain just as we develop content and ask some of your feedback. But the price for both, whichever one it might be, they are fixed and they are one off. You will never have to pay another penny. There are no surprise subscriptions or recurring fees or anything like that. On the full course, there will be the option for a payment plan, but that'll be made quite clear what you're getting and what you have to pay. So if you're going and looking at this early access course or you go and look at the, the full course once it's live, the, the, the payment is one off, you'll never have to pay any more, and that is lifetime access, no matter how many updates we give and all that kind of stuff. The third question was, do you need to have regular race results or, or, or winning results in order to be able to pick up a sponsor? Now, the answer is no. What you do need though is a strong brand. You don't have to have ever raced, and there I've done another video on this, but you don't have to have ever raced, you don't have to be racing regularly, and you don't have to be getting great results. Obviously those things help because it builds into a brand and you tend to get more visibility if you're doing well and, and racing regularly, but by no means is it a prerequisite to sponsorship. As long as you can build a brand and get people behind you and offer something of value, then you'll be able to get sponsors. And another question that was quite similar to that was, does having a low social media following mean you'll never be able to get sponsorship? Now, it's definitely easier to get sponsors if you have a large following, but there is something called micro-influencers. Now, these are people who have command of a smaller audience, but have incredible engagement. So if you don't have a very large audience, I would do two things. Firstly, look at building it, or have you reached maximum size for your audience? That's unlikely. But also start to look at engagement. If your engagement is brilliant, then you don't need the numbers. Because, and I talk about this in the book, Get Paid to Race, if you have a follower count of 500, but an engagement rate of maybe 50%, which would be massive, then you're gonna reach more people than uh, you know a one to 5% engagement rate of a larger audience. So bear that in mind and make sure you're able to communicate that with potential sponsors in 
your media pack, initial email, or when you have a phone call with them. So while it's important that you are building your social followings, don't worry too much about like, needing those kind of hundreds of thousands of numbers. Obviously it helps, obviously it's easier if you do have those numbers, but it doesn't mean you can't get sponsorship until you get there. And finally, I wanna talk about why sponsors don't wanna work with you if you're offering too much for free. Now this might seem like a no brainer to you to say, hey sponsors, give me a sticker, I'll put it on my car and you'll get some free advertising. Now there is a big, big difference between cost and value. So regardless of whether you're offering something for free, for a thousand pounds or 10,000 pounds, if a sponsor doesn't see the value in it, they're never going to go for it. So that all comes across in how you pitch, um, how you present yourself, the way that you communicate with them, so on and so forth, as well as how you put across the benefits and build a rapport with that particular sponsor. Now there's also the concept of perceived value. If someone's going to be getting something for free, even though the benefits are numerous, they're not gonna see value in it. Like there's no point in doing it, it'll be just be effort. Whereas if they are paying money for something, then they're gonna see more value in it and they're gonna work harder to make it work. So this is really important. Don't just give away stuff for free because you think it seems like a no brainer to a sponsor. Charge a minimum amount if you have to do that because they need to value you and you'll probably get a better response if they see value in what you do. So this has been the May Q&A video. Whether you're watching this on the Racing Mentor app or on YouTube, comment below if you have any further questions or if you wanna submit a question for the June Q&A. While I'm here, I wanna say a big thank you to everyone that's been talking about the early access Get Paid to Race course. The response I've had has been overwhelming and I'm so excited to see so many of you kind of get on board with this and start learning and start getting the kind of results that our live students have been getting. Now, with a return on investment of like 4,000% on average through all of our live students, I'm really, really eager to see just the kind of results you can get from this online course. And if you are watching on YouTube and you're not sure what the Racing Mentor app is, you can get that on Android, on iOS and on the web as well. If you go to any of my social channels or the Racing Mental website, you can find all of the details. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you soon.